Hey you guys, this is the book number one of a book series called Boys vs. Girls. Book number one is called The Boys Start the War by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. I hope you enjoy this book as much as I do and my kids in the past have. Chapter one, The Aliens. The island sinking! Wally studied the rivers of yellow that began streaming out from the middle. Sandbags, sandbags, he cried, lifting his waffle up at the edges with his fork, first one side, then the other. If he made a little cut in each corner, the hot syrup traveled from one square to the next. But if he poured the syrup directly over the pat of butter, sitting like an island in the middle of his breakfast, the island grew smaller and smaller as the butter finally melted. They're coming! The back door banged and Wally jumped. Jake and Josh came tumbling into the kitchen, followed by seven-year-old Peter. Who? asked Wally. The new guys over in the Benson's house. Jake grabbed the field glasses from the shelf where mother kept them after she finished her bird watching. Come on! Feet pounded on the stairs and Wally knew that his brothers were headed for the trap door in the attic ceiling and the small balcony on top of the house. The widow's walk, it was called where they could see out over the whole town practically. He sighed, picked up his plate and fork, and went up the first flight of stairs to the bedrooms, then the second set of stairs to the attic. He could never understand why his two older brothers were always in such a rush. Sooner or later, they would find out whether the three new boys in that family were their own ages or not, so why the hurry? Wally felt that you should spend the last week of summer vacation as lazily as possible. And now, he couldn't even enjoy his waffle in peace. Yesterday, Josh had been sitting under a tree sketching Martians, or what he thought Martians would look like. Jake had been figuring out what they would all do on Halloween, and Wally and Peter had been lying in the grass watching ants crawling in and out of a rotten apple. Exactly the kinds of ways you expected us to spend a summer day. Peter was the only one in the family who liked to study things the way Wally did. They both had brown hair, blue eyes, and thick, sturdy hands like their father's. Jake and Josh, however, were string being skinny, with skin that tanned by the first week of June. Jake already had the stepladder in place, and Josh climbed to the top and pushed up on the trap door. Blue sky shone through the square opening as a shower of pigeon droppings rained down on them. One piece landed on Wally's waffle, one gray-white blob of digested worms and bugs. Wally stared helplessly at his plate and then set it on the floor and followed his brothers to the balcony above. He sat down in one corner and watched as J Jake inched forward on his stomach, field glasses in hand, until he was close to the railing. The wind whipped at Wally's shirt, but it was a warm, dry wind that smelled summer and September. Why are they just sitting there? Jake wondered aloud, holding the glasses steady as he stared across the river. Wally squinted, studying the car in the driveway of the house at the end of Island Avenue. The large piece of land in the middle of Buckman was not really an island because water surrounded only three sides of it, but people called it the island anyway. If you were coming in from the east, you entered Buckman on Island Avenue and kept going until you were out of the very tip and then you cross the bridge over into the business district. You might not even have noticed that the river on your right was the same as that on your left. It simply looped about at the end of the island. Okay, a door's opening, here they come, said Jake. How old are they, Josh asked. Wally hoped there would be friends for each of them, an 11-year-old for the twins, a nine-year-old for him, and a seven-year-old for Peter. The family that had moved out of the house on the other side of the river, who had left West Virginia to go to Georgia, had five boys of all ages, and they had been the best friends the Hatfords ever had. Well, say something, demanded Peter when Jake didn't answer. Are they aliens or what? There's the father, said Jake. Now, someone's getting out of the back doors. A guy, about 12, I guess. Yay, cheered Jake. Wait, no, wait a minute. It's a girl, no, a boy, a girl. She just took off her cap. A girl, Wally and Josh stared at each other. Who said anything about girls? Josh took the field glasses next. He sat with his elbows propped on his knees, staring across the river. No one else is getting out. Wait, 
Now the other door's opening. It's the mother. Here come the rest. <gasps> Another girl. Two girls? Well, Jake. Wally thoughtfully bit his lip. This was serious. He grabbed the field glasses himself. My turn, he said. At the tip of the island, a man and woman stood looking up at a large old house. Wally could see a tall girl behind them leaning against a tree and holding a baseball cap in one hand. A smaller girl was running down to the river. Another leg emerged from the back seat of the car. A sneakered foot, faded jeans, a knee, a thigh, and then the last member of the new family got out and stretched. A girl, said Wally, disbelieving, and handed the field glasses back to Josh. Nobody spoke for almost a minute. They're aliens, all right, said Josh. Three kids in one family, and they're all girls? Ugh. I thought Mrs. Benson told Mom they had rented their house to a family with three boys. She said... She thought there were three kids and that maybe we would still have enough to play baseball. I thought she meant boys, added Josh. Wally's shoulders slumped for years. Ever since he could remember, the Hatford and Benson boys had got together every afternoon, rain or shine, to shoot BBs, fish, swim, play kick the can, camp out near Smuggler's Cove, climb Knob Hill, explore the old coal mine, or just lie on their backs in the grass and talk. More than that, with the five Benson boys, the Hatford brothers regularly won first place in the costume contest at Halloween. One year, they had each dressed up like some of the teachers at school. Another year, they had been dominoes. And a third year, they chained themselves together like a prison gang. With the nine of them, they had their own baseball team, and every May, they played a team from Grafton. They had even started their own band. Nothing would ever be the same again. Wally stared out over the hills that dipped and rose like a roller coaster all around Buckman. The steeples of the United Methodist Church and the college chapel peeped up over the tops of the trees surrounding the courthouse. It was a wonderful old town. But any time he and his brothers walked over the swinging footbridge now, they would find three girls in the last house on Island Avenue, not the friends they had known all their lives. We just figured it would be a family of boys, that's all, he said at last. Well, we figured wrong, said Josh. For a long while, there was not another sound from the widow's walk. Finally, Jake broke the silence. Let's burn the bridge. What? Just go down there some night and burn the footbridge. Then the girls couldn't get over to our side of the river. Not here, anyway. They'd have to cross the road bridge and get to school the long way around. Don't be dumb, said Josh. Dad would kill us. We don't have to burn the bridge. We'll just never invite them over, said Wally. That's not enough, said Jake. We won't have anything to do with them, offered his twin. Not enough, said Jake. Well, what do you want to do then? Vaporize them? Asked Peter. Jake sat with his lips pressed hard together, and while he could almost see currents connecting in his brain, Jake was the ringleader, the planner, and he usually got his way. Do you remember the movie we once saw, The Gang from Reno? Yeah. No, said Peter. It was about this village up in the mountains. A motorcycle gang from Reno comes and takes over, but the villagers finally drive them out just by making them miserable. We've got to make the new people miserable. Wally leaned against the railing and studied Jake. It sounded pretty awful, even talking about it. How do you know that the Bensons will move back if we do? Because they weren't sure they'd like Georgia. So they're only renting out their house here instead of selling. If they have trouble keeping renters, they just might give up and move back. You know they'd really rather live here. Anybody would rather live here. We're just helping them make up their minds, that's all. But how are we going to make the new family miserable, asked Josh. This always happens. They turned to Wally. Wally got involved whether he wanted to or not. He always said the first thing that came to his head, and that's why his brothers asked him. Think, Wally. Think of the most terrible and awful, disgusting, horrible thing in the world. Wally tried. He wondered if there was anything more awful or disgusting than pigeon poop on a waffle. Dead fish, he said finally. 
Jake and Josh looked at each other. That's it. We could dump them on the bank over on the other side and the family will think the river's polluted. We'll dump everything dead we can find and they'll be afraid to swim or fish or anything. Start collecting all the dead stuff you can and put it in a bag in the garage. Great idea, Wally. Hoo boy, cried Josh, the war is on. Wow, said Peter. Wally blinked. How did this happen? What had become of his wonderful day? Only a few minutes ago, he'd been peacefully planning to float a waffle box down the river. See if it would make the curve at the end of Island Avenue and come back up the other side. Then he was going to climb to the top of the courthouse to see if there really were bats up there. The way Josh said. And after that, he was going to jump from the largest branch of the sycamore into the river. And maybe he would even have gone out to the cemetery after dark just to say he'd been. He waited his turn at the trap door and slowly climbed down the ladder to the attic below. He picked up his plate, went down to the kitchen, scrunched up the empty waffle box and his waffle along with it, and then with a sigh, he threw them both in the trash.